This video conveys the basic principles for using Jumu SER power controllers and provides notes on the dimensioning and startup thereof. The Jumu SER power controller series comprises the device versions of TYA201 for single phase operation and TYA202 for three phase operation in the three phase economy circuit. The three phase power controller TYA203 switches three phases, thereby permitting the use of phase angle control in the three phase system. The power controllers are available in current ranges from 20 to 250 ampere. The energy management function reduces peak loads and cuts energy costs as a result. The power controllers can be connected to host systems via the Profibus DP or serial interface. The devices are adapted to the application concerned by means of a configuration program. As an alternative, the configuration can be carried out easily and quickly on the device thanks to the standard LCD with plain text display. SCR power controllers are used primarily for heating by means of electrical energy. A temperature controller usually specifies the required output level via a 4 to 20 mA signal. The power controller outputs electrical power to heating elements in proportion to the output level. These power controllers offer far more advantages for the application than SCR power switches. The devices allow the system to start up slowly from the cold state. Certain heating elements have a very low resistance in the cold state. When the voltage supply is connected, inadmissibly high currents are produced. The current limiting function limits the current to a defined value. In practice, the heating elements are often connected in parallel. Any break in a heating element is reliably detected by the partial load failure monitoring function. The temperature of temperature sensitive heating elements can be determined via the element resistance. If the temperature of the elements is too high, the output is reduced and overheating is prevented. If the total output level of two power controllers is maximum 100%, the energy management function prevents two power controller loads being switched at the same time. This function reduces the peak load in the system. The power controllers have two operating modes, which will be described now. The mains voltage is present as sine waves. At a mains frequency of 50 Hz, the time period for one full wave is 20 milliseconds. In burst firing mode, the power controller switches the mains voltage full waves for the percentage of the controller output level to the load. The tyristors are fired exclusively in the zero point. If for example a power controller requires an output level of 60%, three mains voltage full waves are switched to the load and two are blocked. 50% of the output would correspond to one coupled and one blocked full wave. Burst firing mode can be considered unproblematic. The only drawback is the mains voltage fluctuations which can occur if the used electrical wires are too weak. This phenomenon, known as voltage flicker, causes unpleasant light density fluctuations in lightning installations connected to the same mains power supply. In the phase angle control, the thyristors switch in each half wave. In a 50 Hz network, therefore, the power controllers switch every 10 milliseconds. The ignition time is defined by the control angle. The control angle alpha can be between 0 and 180 degrees electrical. At 0 degrees, the sine waves are coupled. At 180 degrees, the mains voltage is not coupled to the load. In the example, the control angle is 45 degrees. Phase angle control is mainly used in applications where current limiting is required. The drawback with phase angle control is the generation of reactive power even with ohmic loads. The reactive power to active power ratio increases as the control angle enlarges.
Phase angle control produces a shift in the fundamental wave of the mains current with respect to the mains voltage. The figure shows the mains voltage and the load voltage produced by phase angle control. With normally operated ohmic loads, the load current is in phase with the load voltage. The figure shows the fundamental wave of the load current. The fundamental wave of the load current is phase delayed to the mains voltage. The phase delay causes an amount of reactive power. The ratio of this reactive power to active power increases as the power demand decreases. In large systems, the reactive power must be eliminated or reduced by compensation facilities. Normally, the fundamental wave is 50 Hz. But due to steep switch on edges, a multitude of the fundamental wave is also generated. These harmonics have a large interference potential and usually necessitate the use of network filters. Burst firing mode is unproblematic compared to phase angle control. However, phase angle control is required if the current needs to be limited and in case of transformer loads. The operating modes can also be used in combination. For example, burst firing mode can be initiated via phase angle control. This functionality is called soft start in phase angle control. In startup mode, this function also permits the use of current limiting. SCR power controllers vary the switch on and switch off ratio depending on the controller output level required. The output further depends on the voltage supply to the SCR power controllers. As an example, a controller requires 60% of output from an SCR power controller in burst firing mode. 60% of the mains voltage full waves are coupled to the heating elements and the temperature required in the process is therefore reached. If the mains voltage now drops by 5%, the quadratic relation brings about a power reduction of approx 10%. As a result, the temperature will fall and the controller increases its output level. The output will return to the original value and the required temperature is reached again after a certain time. Each change in the mains voltage causes relatively long times with control deviations. The subordinate control loop provides a remedy. For example, the SCR power controllers are able to control the power for the load in proportion to the controller output level. This compensates the fluctuations in the mains voltage. In their standard version, the SCR power controllers control the square of the load voltage in proportion to the requested controller output level. If the load resistance is constant, then the controlling U square effectively controls the power for the load. U square control makes sense when operating heating elements with positive temperature coefficients, such as molybdenum heating elements. The heating elements increase their resistance as the temperature rises. With such heating elements, U square control aids the control process. If the temperature of the heating element drops, the resistance of the heating element is lower. If the U square factor is fixed, the output increases due to the lower element resistance. The higher output helps increase the temperature, respectively compensate the disturbance influence. In many cases, the heating elements have a low cold resistance. Consequently, extremely high currents occur in the cold state. The current limiting function facilitates the limiting of the load current. Current limiting is possible only in phase angle mode. U square control is used in most cases. 
SCR power controllers with I square control are also available. The equation shows that the power rises proportional to I square at a constant load resistance. This control method is used for heating elements with a negative temperature coefficient. A negative temperature coefficient occurs in molten glass and graphite elements, for example. The control method is also employed in galvanic applications where a constant current is required. At Jumo, power controllers with I square control also permit functionalities such as partial load failure monitoring, dual energy management, and current limiting. SIC elements have a negative or positive temperature coefficient depending on the operating point. Power control is applied for such elements. Jumo power controllers with a subordinate P control offer additional functionalities such as the free running economy circuit and heating element temperature monitoring via R control. In order to select a suitable power controller, the voltage at which the load is to be operated must be known. The current produced when the load is operated with the mains voltage is the load current. The admissible load current of the power controller stated in the table must be equivalent to or higher than this value. The subordinate control loop must also be stated. In most cases the U square control takes place. Often a current limiting is required here. As a result, SCR power controllers with subordinate U square or P control must be used. These devices can measure the load current. With respect to the load circuit, the phase must be connected over the thyristors and the heating element. The semiconductor fusing shown protects the two thyristors and can be replaced as required. The control electronics operate at the same voltage as the load circuit. The voltage supply must be applied with due consideration for microfusing. The SCR power controller has a current input and a voltage input. The controller output is specified through the current input 4 to 20 mA. The wiring takes place as shown. The power controller can be commissioned via a configuration program. In addition to other benefits, the configuration can in this case also be carried out without connecting the voltage supply. With this example only a few settings are required. These are then made at the front of the device. The adjustments are made at configuration level. For this standard application, the power controller, analog inputs and set point value configuration menus are required. The controller specifies the output level as a 4 to 20 mA signal. The required setting can be configured under analog inputs. It must be ensured that the current input is applied as the output level specification. The power controller should be operated in burst firing mode. The subordinate U square control 
should also be used. The settings can be configured and checked in the Power Controller menu. Manual mode is available for test purposes. In this mode, the output level for the power controller can be specified manually. If 100% is specified, the power controller switches all the sinus waves of the voltage supply to the load. At an output of 50%, half the voltage full waves are coupled. As soon as the power controller is taken out of manual mode, the power controller specifies the output level via the current signal. The control input in use, the control method and the operating mode can be seen on the power controller. All electrical parameters are available via the display. Additional information is provided in the form of technical literature.